breaking tonight. President Trump takes reporters' questions on Steve Bannon, Russia collusion, North Korea, and more. Hello and welcome to Justice. I'm Janine Pirro. Thanks for being with us and Happy New Year. My opening statement is just moments away, but first, President Trump at Camp David this weekend with Republican leadership. Here are some highlights from his news conference this morning, including the president's message for author Michael Wolf and anyone who questions his fitness for the Oval Office. I went to uh, the best colleges or college. Uh, I went to a, uh, I had a situation where I was a very excellent student, came out, made billions and billions of dollars, became one of the top business people. Went to television and for 10 years was a tremendous success, as you probably have heard. Uh, ran for president one time and won. And then I hear this guy that uh, does it not know me, doesn't know me at all. By the way, did not interview me for three. He said he interviewed me for three hours in the White House. It didn't exist, okay? It's in his imagination. And what I was heartened by, because I talk about fake news and the fake news media, was I really was the fact that so many of the people that I talk about in terms of fake news actually came to the defense of this great administration and even myself because they know the author and they know he's a fraud. Just so you know, I never interviewed with him in the White House at all. He was never in the Oval Office. We didn't have an interview. Uh, and uh, I did a quick interview with him a long time ago, having to do with an article. But I don't know this man. I guess uh, Sloppy Steve brought him into the White House quite a bit, and it was one of those things. That's why Sloppy Steve is now looking for a job. Mr. President, if, if Robert Mueller asks you to come and speak with his committee personally, are you committed still to doing that? Do you believe that? Yeah, just so you understand, just so you understand, there's been no collusion, there's been no crime. And in theory, everybody tells me I'm not under investigation. Maybe Hillary is, I don't know, but I'm not. But there's been no collusion. There's been no crime. But we have been very open. We could have done it two ways. We could have been very closed, and it would have taken years. But, you know, it's sort of like when you've done nothing wrong, let's be open and get it over with. Because, honestly, it's very, very bad for our country. It's making our country look foolish. And this is a country that I don't want looking foolish. And it's not going to look foolish as long as I'm here. We'll talk more about the accusations in that book, Fire and Fury, a little later. But I don't want to focus on lies and made-up stories tonight. I want to focus on the truth. Here's my opening statement. It's our first show of 2018, but if you've been with Justice for much of the past or any of the past six years, you know there's one topic that really gets my goat. So we begin with the gift that keeps on giving Hillary Clinton and the organized criminal enterprise parading as a 501c3 charity known as the Clinton Foundation that is now officially under federal criminal investigation. The largest unprosecuted charity fraud in American history is about to see some comeuppance. Now, the ruthless, profit-driven woman who was all about money and power on her attempted ascension to the presidency as she covered for her sexual predator husband and her sexual predator financial supporters in that den of iniquity known as Hollywood is now about to face a real investigation. Not a matter like Loretta Lynch and Jim Comey like to call the work of the hardworking men and women of the FBI. Not a review, but a hard-charging criminal investigation with a prosecutor bent on truth and justice. Never in the history of this country has a candidate for any major office skirted the law, pushed the legal envelope, or been under criminal investigation as much as Hillary Clinton, nor has anyone lied, contradicted herself, or run as a less honest and trustworthy candidate in American history. Now, Department of Justice sources tell me today that this investigation has actually been ongoing and that Attorney General Jeff Sessions has directed that sufficient resources be given to the case that was left dormant during the Obama administration. Okay, so is this about politics? Ask yourselves. How do two people who start with nothing, who work in government most of their lives without a business, without a product, without a website, amass hundreds of millions of dollars that we know of, 
What was this Clinton Foundation? What was this Clinton Foundation global initiative? And why so many intersections between the State Department and contributions to the foundation? A lot of questions remain unanswered. Now, if you've watched this show, you know how angry I am about the State Department's approval of the sale of 20% of our uranium to a Russian company. Uranium essential to make Molly 99, used for medical nuclear imaging that we now buy from foreign countries that, by American law, must be produced in America, but our Department of Energy won't even put money in their budget to allow for the creation of American made Molly 99 that millions of Americans like me who have cancer or other health issues use to get better. And like pigs at the trough, the Clintons maneuvered $145 million from the Russian company to their so-called foundation, a half a million dollars speaking fee to Bill, and additionally more than $30 million, which of course the Clintons didn't disclose. And for those of you who sit there and say, well, it was the Committee on Foreign Investments in the United States, CFIUS, that approved the sale to the Russian company of our American uranium, I got news for you. The State Department is the big dog in this decision, and seven of the nine CFIUS members are connected to the Clinton Foundation. Put those puppies under oath and watch them squirm. And why? Why was a guy named Pinchuk, who builds steel pipes in the Ukraine doing business with Iran and thus violating U.S. law, not sanctioned by Hillary's State Department? Here's another shock. The Clinton Foundation received millions from Pinchuk with an additional pledge of 20 more million. And why? When 316,000 people die in Haiti, do Bill and Hillary rush there and within hours promote a phone system by a man who becomes the biggest player of mobile phones in Haiti? Because their friend, that man, Dennis O'Brien, then contributes millions to the Clinton Foundation. The Clintons' influence peddling was on a global scale with Bill as the world's middleman, setting American foreign policy to coincide with the flow of hundreds of millions of dollars to the foundation, as well as cash, directly into Bill's pocket and ultimately to Hillary. I'm not going to go through it all. But according to Charles Ortel, an expert in analyzing forensic records like these, there's been no real audit of this alleged charitable foundation which spends more money on salaries, expenses, airfare of mostly Clinton comrades and former Clinton campaign workers. There is also no explanation of payments to members of the Clinton Foundation for the services and reimbursement of expenses by donors to the foundation. If you're wondering what that means, think money laundering. Still skeptical? I ask, how many of you have ever seen a hospital wing or a medical center with the name the Clinton Wing or the Hillary Clinton Center for Women's Medical Health? None, because there are none. Their big kahuna is that they're working on a drug to cure AIDS, which they pursued as part of their presidential library? The Clinton Foundation was promoting the use of potentially adulterated HIV and AIDS drugs from 2003 to 2009 when Rod Rosenstein was a U.S. attorney in Maryland. He won a $500 million penalty against the Indian manufacturer of the generic drug, but no finding against the Clintons. Why, when he was the United States attorney, did Rosenstein fail to require the laureate education and Clinton Foundation to explain how the Clinton Global Initiative University was organized? Tax filings for six years do not explain what Bill Clinton did for $18 million paid to him as a part-time chancellor while he held roles at the Clinton Foundation. Why? because it's all the same players who we now know rigged the investigation of Hillary's email case. And for all those naysayers who say this is nothing more than a deflection from the Mueller investigation, I got a tip for you. Keep your mouths shut.
This is as dirty as it gets. Mueller was the head of the FBI for all the years that the Clinton Foundation was protected, and Jim Comey was the deputy attorney general for all those years. And if we've learned anything in the last six months, it's that Jim Comey's rigged the investigation for his friend Hillary and made sure that Bob Mueller would be appointed so that they could cover their own butts while trying to point a finger at the president who has done nothing but improve our economy, our safety, our security, and our independence. And that's my open. Tell me what you think on my Facebook page, Twitter, and Instagram, hashtag Judge Janine. And joining me now, Congressman Jim Jordan, Congressman Mark Meadows, both of whom serve on the House Oversight Committee and penned a joint op-ed this week saying it's time for Attorney General Jeff Sessions to go. Thanks to both of you for being here tonight. All right, guys, uh, I'll start with you, Congressman Jordan. You still think Sessions has to go? Well, I think we've seen some changes. Uh, you know, the fact that they are investigating the Clinton Foundation, the fact that they're looking at this uranium one issue, the fact that they told Chairman uh, Nunes at the Intel Committee they're actually going to now give us the documents they've been seeking for six months. So my hats off to Mark Meadows, Ron DeSantis, Matt Gates, and Chairman Nunes for putting the pressure on the Justice Department. It's, it's sort of like they've had a little change of attitude. I always, I always think of when I was a kid, sometimes my dad would have a little attitude adjustment meeting with my brother and I. And normally after those meetings, we had a little change of perspective and a change in behavior. <laughs> That's what I think we're witnessing now. And, and again, it's because of the push from Congress, I believe, that we're seeing some change. So if that continues, great. But if it well, doesn't, then we might need to change at, at, at who's, who's serving as attorney general. And, and so you're still not quite there yet. You want to see a little more. Well, we more. still don't have a special counsel, which we called for seven months ago to look into all the things you talked about but in you your wonderful opening, opening statement. I've, all, yeah, I've called for it, but, you know, I you have sure to tell did. you, I'm impressed right now. Same I, here. You know, Same I want to give them the benefit of the doubt. And, of course. You know, but I'm ready to go back at them if it isn't the case. But, I, Congressman well Meadows, let me ask you this. Um, it, it, uh, I have, from a source in the FBI, uh, that they and, and, and a memo went out on the FBI network that asked for uh, agents who were willing to work on this case who had experience in white collar crime and corruption. Uh, that, in addition to the November 13th letter of the Attorney General, where he says, although he's looking to have special people, high up people assess whether or not it needs to be looked at, he also said that he would add whatever necessary resources are needed. And I think we now know that the Obama administration dropped the ball. Uh, how about you? Are you inclined to kind of give Jeff Sessions the benefit of the doubt? Or are you still holding out? Well, I'm, I'm willing to, to applaud him on this particular move, Judge, and you're exactly right. I mean, if he's going to look into Uranium One, if he's going to look into the Clinton Foundation, that's what the American people want. That's what you and I want. It's about time that we get answers. But there are still some troubling things, mm -hmm. and Jim was, was talking about that, the fact that there continue to be leaks. There continues to be a lack of sufficient evidence. Let me give you this. This is a memo from, uh, from the 2nd of, of March. March, and, uh, and when we look at 2nd of May, and when you look at the bottom of it, it's, it's all deleted. Now, what we do know is, is on that particular memo, it's when it talked about being grossly negligent, when, when they changed all of that back in, back in May. And, and yet, this is the kind of documents that the House oversight is getting fully redacted, and they act like they're complying. So Does I'm it? sure that Attorney General Sessions wouldn't say that that's a good thing. So get us the documents well. unredacted so the American people can make a, their uh, decision. Uh, well, Congressman Jordan, I mean, w what Congressman Meadows is talking about, yeah. it has to be frustrating for you. Why is it that uh, the New York Times, uh, that Tom Fitton and a lot of these organizations that, and, and I give Fitton all the credit in the world, sure. I really do, have sure. access to material that you, as part of the congressional oversight or, 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 or you know, judiciary committees can't get? A lot of times because they go through a court and, and we're just asking as an equal branch of government for the, for the executive branch to give us that information and they don't. We, we haven't seen much difference until this week. We haven't seen much difference between this attorney general and the, and the Holder administration and the yeah. Lynch administration. So that's got to change. And Mark's right. Stop the leaks. Give us the documents. Appoint a second special counsel. And most importantly, answer our questions. When Attorney General Sessions was in front of the Judiciary Committee, I asked him straight up, did the FBI pay Christopher Steele, the author of the dossier? Were you paying him reimbursement? 
reimbursing him at the same time that the Clinton found, or excuse me, the Clinton uh, campaign, the DNC were paying paying Christopher Steele. That's a simple question they with a direct answer, answer. They would not answer that question. That's a fundamental question. If our FBI was paying the author of that dossier, and then if they took that dossier and used it as the basis to secure FISA warrants at, at, at the FISA oh, court, to spot, that so is, how do those we get are so that? wrong. Congressman we, Meadows, how, how do we find out if that dossier, or, or Peter Strzok was the one who was the affiant uh, for the warrant? Yep. How do we find that out? Well, well you, you know, here's how we have to find it out. Chairman Nunes has done a good job. I can tell you that we, we reached an agreement this week for more documents to come. Yeah. But we've been here before. Jim and yeah. I have been here before yeah. where they promise documents and then they don't All actually right, so deliver. So what's the deadline? So as long as, so the deadline really is January 15th for our committee for Judiciary and Oversight. Uh, Chairman Nunes uh, says that documents are coming in. There's a very short leash on that. Listen, if the Attorney General is willing to be transparent, we'll applaud him. Jim and I will come back on judge and, and say thank you, Attorney General Sessions. But if he's not, you know, Lady Justice has a blindfold. No one's above the law, and it's time that we get to the bottom All of this. All right, guys, we've got a date, January 15th. We're going to make sure that we have that phone call because the American public and my viewers are not willing to, to wait much longer than that. But kudos to both of you and kudos you. to your committee. Thanks, Congressman Jim Jordan and Mark Meadows. Have Thanks, a good Judge. evening. And Thank that new book out this week that says the Trump White House is dysfunctional. My next guest was a key part of the White House for several months, and I'll bet he's got something to say about that. Dr. Sebastian Gorka joins me live in just a moment. Stay with us. Continued outrage from the president today over Michael Wolff's new book, which Trump says is full of lies and had zero access to him. Former deputy assistant to the president, Dr. Sebastian Gorka, joins me now with reaction. Uh, good evening. Happy new, uh, happy new Year. Happy New Year to you, Dr. Gorka. You worked in the White House. Did you ever see that guy with the president? Uh, never saw him with the president. I saw him once in Reince's office waiting to talk to Steve. I was told to give him time for interviews. I refused. I, I, I knew straight away this oily creep is not to be trusted, and I refused to talk to him. Okay, so when uh, people seem to be obsessed with this whole thing, and I don't know how people could possibly believe, and that's why I wasn't even going to do an open on this because it's so ridiculous, that Trump's whole, fam whole, whole family thinks that, you know, he, he's not clear headed or that Melania cried or Trump wasn't sure he was going to win. I know the man for 30 years. He knew he was going to win. He said he was going to win and he did win. Judge, just the idea. Anybody who's been living in a cave for the last 50 years, even they would know this man always goes in to win. This idea that he didn't want to win and this is a publicity <laughs> stunt, the whole thing's a crock of garbage. All right, let's let's move on. I want to talk to you about not just uh, the book, but I want to talk to you about now this Clinton Foundation being investigated officially. Now we're hearing about it. Although some of my sources tell me that you know Jeff Sessions is not as open about it as he could be because he's waiting for the Inspector General's report to come out. I mean, to me that's protocol nonsense. If you got a grand jury, use it. You don't need the IG. But last night, uh, I believe it was last night, you had a little back and forth with Geraldo. I'm gonna. You to take a listen. Is 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 the statue of Lady Justice blindfolded for a reason, Geraldo? All Americans should be equal before the law, whether your last name is Rivera or whether your last name is Clinton. This woman has committed felonies. It goes without saying. The fact that more it than fifty percent without saying you cannot does. make a statement like oh that my because gosh, you're a Geraldo, smart man. You the director make a of the FBI, like the director of the FBI said she had a hundred and eight classified emails on her private. Server. That's a felony, Geraldo. Ha! Now, I, the reason I wanted to play that, Dr. Gorka, is as a judge, I'm going to rule on that. Doctor, you Please. were absolutely right. And my friend Geraldo, who I love, was wrong. When you have those felonies uh, or, the, or that classified information, that's a felony. And I'm impressed because you're not a lawyer and he is. 
correct? Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I found out uh, on Thursday he's a lawyer. I'm not, but I've served twice in federal government, in the Defense Department, in the White House. And it, intent is irrelevant. If you leave your briefcase of classified information by accident on the Metro, you have committed a felony. And she did it willfully 108 times with her homebrew server. That's why she needs to be prosecuted to the full extent of the law judge. She not only did it willfully, she did it because her motive was to hide from the American public the fact that uh, she was uh, wheeling and dealing through the State Department. And I got to tell you, Dr. Gorka, let me ask you this. So first, she deletes 33,000 emails, and then she uh, bleach bits, and then she takes a hammer. And I think there's a, there's a picture, a video of me taking a hammer trying <laughs> to break a BlackBerry or an iPhone. And uh, all of a sudden now, we hear about this official investigation. There's a little fire at her house in Chappaqua. Am I, am I too skeptical? <laughs> Look, anything is possible with this organized crime gang called the Clintons. But let's make one thing clear. This has to be investigated, preferably by FBI agents from field offices that have nothing to right. do with the swamp. Bring them right. from I don't care where, but clean cops, because you know what happened under Obama? They politicized the DOJ and the FBI. I proudly trained hundreds and thousands of analysts and agents. Mm -hmm. But what we saw, we saw FBI FBI agents, FBI agents destroy Clinton's laptops. Well, That's corruption. It is corruption, it is obstruction, and uh, it is, as far as I'm concerned, a reason for an investigation of James Comey and yes. that whole operation. And the point that you make is so important, and that is this has to be handled by the field offices and not headquarters, because that's where the corruption starts brewing in headquarters, as we've seen from Strzok and uh, McCabe, who is still there, and the rest of them. Anyway, Dr. Sebastian Gorka, thanks for being with us this evening. God bless. Thanks, Judge. Thank you. And ludicrous attacks against the president's mental fitness, plus the one stat I saw this week about President Trump's first year in office that I found quite interesting. I'm going to talk about all of that next with the panel. Dan Bongino, David Goodfriend. Will they be good friends? The fireworks starts next. Don't change the channel. Live from America's News Headquarters, I'm Marianne Rafferty. President Trump says he's open to talking to North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, despite previously criticizing his own Secretary of State for suggesting talks with the rogue regime. Mr. Trump added that any talks would come with conditions, but did not specify. This comes days before the first formal talks between North and South Korea in more than two years are set to take place in preparation for the upcoming Winter Olympics in South Korea. And Jerry Van Dyke, younger brother of Dick Van Dyke, passed away today at his home in Arkansas. He was 86. The younger Van Dyke brother struggled for decades to escape his brother's shadow. He found success on the TV show Coach, where he played the dim-witted sidekick to the show's star. Van Dyke received four Emmy nominations for that role. I'm Marianne Rafferty. Now back to Justice with Judge Janine. Should Americans be concerned about the president's mental fitness that he appears to be speaking so lightly about threats regarding the nuclear button? Trump versus the media, the 2018 edition has begun. And the White House press corps is in full attack mode this week. So let's talk about it and a lot more with my panel tonight, former Secret Service agent Dan Bongino and Democratic strategist, former staff secretary to President Bill Clinton, David Goodfriend, join me now. All right, guys. So. What do you think of the fact that here we are in 2018 and all the good things that should happen and have happened and uh, that should happen in terms of people wishing each other cheer and peace and prosperity and they're talking about the president being nuts. Go ahead, David. Well, I guess if, if I were an advisor to the president, I would just say to him, you know, it's probably not a good idea for you to go out publicly and say, I'm really sane and I'm really smart. Just ignore it. Uh, I think this may be the first time in American history that a president has publicly tried to argue that he is in fact sane. Just say nothing, Mr. President, because the more you talk, the more you sound insane. And I just think he's, he's, he's digging this hole for himself well, in a very odd way. But look, I mean, the people who voted for President Trump, I think 
recognized that he's the same guy today that he was when he ran, and uh, they made a judgment to vote for him, and that's democracy. I don't necessarily think that it's uh, productive to try to be an armchair diagnostician here. I just think that the president is making his own worst argument by engaging uh, on this and think, saying, Dan, I'm saying everybody. Do you think he overdid it by saying, I'm saying I went to some of the best schools, I made <laughs> billions, I even had a TV show that was a success? Does that make him crazy? Judge, listen, he's a builder from Queens. How many times do I have to come on this network and say this? <laughs> this guy is a warrior. He's a fighter. No, David, I mean, it's, I'm dead serious. Like, when are people going to wake up and realize if you hit this guy, he is going to kneecap you? He doesn't care. And, and David, I hear your arguments. I get it. But let's be honest. This is not the first time the senility of a, question, of a president has That's been questioned. Right. Right. Ronald, now, now, Judge Jeanine, what do these presidents have in common? Donald Trump, George W. Bush, and Ronald Reagan. Oh, they oh, all gee. happen to be Republicans, by the way. How does that happen? Well, Crazy. let me ask you this. Let, let me ask you this, David. Look, you, you yeah. can't deny that the stock market has got record highs, and they say it may even end up at 30000 before. Or in the end of the first term, that that the unemployment and you know what I find fascinating is that the uh, black unemployment rate now and this president is supposed to be a racist. So you've got the chart right there is one of the lowest it's ever been. And if you look at the top of that, it shows 2017, the end of 2017. I mean, we had a black president and it was it was horrific. Now, yeah. this president is supposed to be a racist, and he is improving a lot of African Americans, many of whom voted for him because they had nothing to lose. Well, I, um, I will tell you this. In 2016, when President Obama argued that the stock market had tripled on his watch, then Donald Trump, candidate Trump, said, that's a bunch of baloney, it doesn't matter. When President Obama said, we've cut unemployment in half, then candidate Trump said, that's a bunch of baloney, it's phony statistics. The minute he becomes president, Donald Trump says so the stock market matters, So you don't believe that black unemployment matters. is one of the lowest I, rates in history? Well, You don't I, believe I think this? CNBC said it. I, I didn't say that, Judge, you know that. I'm no, saying well, Donald Trump. It. That's why I'm asking you. Donald Trump changes his opinion about stock markets and unemployment statistics based on what benefits him. I think it's great that unemployment is low. I think our labor force participation rate is low too. People have given up looking. I hope they come back to the workforce. Well, I think it's I'm great the stock happy, market is up. Talking about I'm, glad the, I'm glad the stock market is up. I just hope it helps everybody, not just the Donald Trumps of the world. Hit it, so Dan. he can he can yeah, argue yeah, with Dan, both Dan, ways. Dan, let, let me let me set David straight for a minute here. This is Please. an indisputable statistic, okay? Barack Obama, based on GDP growth, had the worst recovery record from a recession in modern American history post World War II. How the stock Arguing market that do? will make a fool out of you, not me. So how, that's how the a stock fact. market also, do under Obama? B b Barack, the stock Obama did great. I'm not, the, great, no, thank you. That's funny, David. David, that's interesting. I brought up GDP growth. He's the worst yes. in and modern American history. What? Wait, what do you do? You do liberal debate tactic 101. Oh, come you on, the judge the brought market, up the stock market. Which has you're you're to, pivoting well, off the judge's yeah, but topic. I didn't. No, but because well, answer I'm the judge's question. Okay, David. Yeah. Yeah, you, I just answered it. The stock market did quite well under Barack okay. Obama. Okay, I we're don't good. measure. We're good. I don't measure economic performance, David, like most sane people okay. who practice economics like You want to know what's like crazy, guys? Market. I'll tell you yeah. what's crazy. Everybody's worried about Donald Trump being crazy. What's crazy is Barack Obama in December saying that Donald Trump and, and, and this administration is a preparatory to a World War II killing of millions that Donald Trump is a quasi-Adolf Hitler. To me, that's bonkers, all right? And, and Barack it, it Obama is. should be ashamed of himself. It's almost because as bonkers as Donald Trump saying Obama was never a citizen. I mean, that's bonkers too. So, well, you I guess know what? Did, I, did you ever see a long form? Are you are you being serious right now? <laughs> are you being serious right now? I'm are you going to buy into? I'm just asking. Yes. Oh, okay, okay, right. Judge. We'll, well let you have don't it. Don't you think? Let me ask you. Answer my question. Did, don't you think it's bonkers for Barack Obama when we've got a president who has done more for Israel to compare Donald Trump to Adolf Hitler? That's bonkers. Well, I think when his supporters say Jews will not replace us in a, in a march and he, he says there are some good people in there, that's pretty frightening. Go ahead, Dan. You know, I don't understand why we have liberals on the show. 
They never, uh, they, we're so judge, cute. they never answer a question, <laughs> ever. I asked David about GDP growth. He okay, let's the talk about GDP growth. I think that's great. A question. You GDP out, growth. Wait, David, it's my turn. The way sure. this works is you talk, I talk. I shut up when you talk. Maybe you should clam up now, okay? This is what's interesting. <laughs> the judge throws out to you, hey, Donald Trump, he's done great things for Israel. He's recognized their legitimate capital in Jerusalem. And you right. answer a question about some Looney Tune group of supporters, some maniacs who's ever Every sane person's already called out. You, you, you can't even answer a question. I mean, this is why I hate debating people like you guys. You never answer the question. You always go to a different question because the question the judge asks is going to make you look silly. Just well, here's, here's the thing. What, what's your name again? Uh, the, civ the, uh, the guy I'm up against. I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Dan. Your name? Dan. 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 The question was whether when Barack Obama compared Donald Trump to, you know, Adolf Hitler, Adolf Hitler was it an apt comparison? I believe when you see his own supporters, Trump's own supporters, say Jews will not replace us, and then, oh, yeah, I'm answering your question, Dan. Dan, you ready for the answer? I'm going to throw up. Okay, okay. You can, yeah, you, your air, ahead, your air sickness right. bag can be found under your seat, okay? All right, you know so what? So the next Gotta thing go. the comparison the, says you is know pretty what? accurate. The only I nutty thing accurate. that's come out of a president's mouth is what Barack Obama said about Donald Trump. Goodbye. Joe Piscopo standing by live to talk about the most outrageous things we heard this week. Plus, the president says he's the reason North and South Korea are talking. So does my next guest agree? Fox News military analyst Colonel David Hunt is standing by. Don't go away. President Trump says his tough stance is the reason North and South Korea are communicating. The president also saying today that he's open to meeting with North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un. Here to react to that and more, Fox News military analyst Colonel David Hunt. All right, good evening and happy new year, Colonel. How are you? Good, thanks. Same to you. All right. So the president says, but for him, uh, North and South Korea wouldn't be meeting. How do you, how do you interpret that? Well, we had, nothing's worked with this with North Korea for administration after administration. Uh, the new president likes to poke a stick in people's eye, and it, it's getting everyone's attention, including the president of North Korea. We, we just don't know if it's working or not. The issue for us is whether, not military, because we would destroy North Korea. The issue right. is always going to be Seoul. But the, I think there's as much to do with the president saying what he's saying outside of the button, bigger button issue as it is with the, the Olympics coming up. I think that's another very good reason for the North and South to be talking. So far, they've had an administrative check of their communications thing. Hopefully this week they'll do something more serious. Well, I think you would agree, though, that everything that's happened in terms of, you know, from Bill Clinton giving money to uh, Kim Jong-un's father or grandfather, whoever it was, uh, you know, the Democratic approach or the Democrat approach hasn't really helped. And, you know, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with this bozo might make a difference. But I want to I move now to Iran and the protesters in Iran. Uh, it appears that uh, not only has the president uh, tweeted the U.S. is watching, Watching, but uh, you know the uh, uh, the the uh, our UN ambassador. Here we go. The UN ambassador Nikki Haley is basically saying that uh, the U.S. is there in the event that uh, uh, Iran's claims of uh, uh, fomenting an unrest uh, is not complete nonsense, as they allege. Look, the, the issue with Iran right now is that there's a lot of protesting about money in budgets. The issue of whether the president of the United, vast United Nations wants to say something is less important than what we do. The, 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 the uh, Central Intelligence Agency and the National Intelligence Community have got to be very, very active to have any chance of assisting the protesters. And what we ultimately want is an overthrow of a very powerful regime. I don't think any president or U.N. secretary is going to change that. Active covert operations and other means are the only way this, we're going to be able to help them. Rhetoric's not going to do the trick. Well, do you think that, the, that this is all fomented by the fact that the people in Iran believe that the money that, was, that we gave them on pallets and unmarked airplanes and all that other stuff, $150 billion plus $400 million, was supposed to go to help them, and instead it's being used to buy weapons and to assist them in their terrorist activities? The issue about the budget is clear. Uh, the 150, uh, the, yeah, the people on the street are very upset with the way this budget came out to the, to the, to the uh, guards than it did to the, the public. 
The 150 billion, I understand, is political football. The, the real big issue is that they're back on the streets, whereas they haven't been since 2009, and that one didn't work very well. Right, right. All right, Colonel David Hunt, good to be with you. Thanks for being with us. All right, and from Joy Behar to Meryl Streep, you'll hear some of the most outrageous things I heard this week, and I'll talk about all of them with the great Joe Piscopo. Don't go away. Welcome back to Justice. You can always count on the views Joy Behar to really elevate a political debate. Trump needs to be medicated and hospitalized <laughs> at this point, or he is going to just kill all of us. And, you know, my feeling is that probably they're getting closer to him in the Mueller investigation. And that's what this is about, a lot of it. It's like he'll blow the whole world up so he and his stupid sons don't have to go to jail. <laughs> And that's just one of the most outrageous things I heard this week. Joining me now to talk about it all, actor and comedian, the one and only Saturday Night Live alum, Joe Piscopo. Hi, Joe. Hi, Judge. It's so good to see you. Good to be with you on Saturday night. Yes. Uh, so what do you think of Joy Behar? Well, I've known her so many years. I have trouble attacking anybody anymore. I'm trying to keep everything nice. But did, didn't that report, that fake news report, come across ABC? And then that just happened a couple weeks ago. So they re revisited that this week already? Yeah, yeah. All right, you're Talking about Brian Ross. Yeah, yeah. She came out and said, Yeah, the president's gonna be indicted. Yeah, 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 Russian collusion. Yeah, 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 she yeah, messed that yeah, one yeah. up. Now she's talking about the, the you know, the president needs his meds. Everybody's or... gotta relax. Well, everybody please stop and relax. No, Is don't it... relax. I, I don't wanna relax. <laughs> Here's the thing, just don't lie. Joe, don't lie. I don't like people who lie. I know, but they're they're like obsessed with going after the president and on every which way, where they never pick a pick a on anybody on the left, you know? Where of course some not. of the guys on the left. And there's some great material on the left that has to be made fun of, and I would like to see that as well. Okay, all right. So there's some great material on the left. What do we got next? We've got uh, uh, Meryl Streep. Let's see that one. Oh. Okay, Meryl Streep says, I don't want to hear about the silence of me. I want to hear about the silence of Melania Trump. I want to hear from her. She has so much that's valuable to say, and so does Ivanka. I want her to speak now. Now, this is hogwash from uh, uh, Meryl Streep, and there's a video that we have all that's being uh, uh, of posters all over L.A. I think we should put it up now, guys. Uh, of Meryl Streep that she knew about Harvey Weinstein. She said nothing. And even I said in my open that this woman is an icon in Hollywood. You want to tell me that half of these women who weren't hit on, who were hit on by, uh, 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 what's his name? Harvey. Uh, yeah. That they didn't say to her, look, He's yeah. hitting on yeah. me? You know, I, I, she's one of the most gifted actresses in the world. Who you know? cares? Well, <laughs> you Why are you being so nice tonight? I don't want to go after anybody. You got to think, first of all, oh. don't go after Melania. Don't go after Melania. is Melania. Ma magnificent. You know, you know. And I you're know. On the she's elegant. She's brilliant. She speaks and, five languages. These bozos can't compare to her. And she's a great role model for women. I'm the father of three daughters. You are know you? That. You got As three girls? Three girls. I, yeah. got, I got five kids. You know what I always say in Jersey. I have a child at every exit. You know that. So I said, <laughs> so I'm <laughs> I'm at the SNL at 40, and I and I, I, just, I said this before in the network, and then I remember the girl I was with, like, kind of pokes me that Donald Trump's down. He was there with Melania. I lean over up there at Studio 8H. Listen, and then, and then, don't, so Melania catches, I see, catch, I catch Melania's eye. She, she, she elbows Donald like they're a cute, very cute couple. People they are. don't know I knew this. The one they were she dating. elbows him and says, Look, "Oh, say hi to your pal Joe." I wave hey like this. That's that's the Melania I know. Plus, she's bringing at-risk children we're to the White House. We're not talking out. about Melania. Talk about Meryl Streep. But she's this going big after. Mouth she is went going after, after Melania. She went after right. Ivanka. Yeah, and, 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 and Harvey Weinstein or pal. How many movies did she do with Harvey Weinstein? You want to yeah, tell yeah. me she didn't know? Yeah, she must have known. But they should go after somebody like Maxine Waters. That's that's you know if they want to go after somebody. Maxine Waters. All right, go a, after I mean, Maxine. just to be just to be funny, like Leslie Jones on SNL. I'd love to see that. Leslie what? doing Maxine Waters. On she Saturday could do Maxine Night. Waters. Oh, why doesn't she? I don't know why they don't go. Why yeah. don't why don't they don't do Adam Schiff? I've done this before. Adam Schiff is so funny with his eyes. He's so obsessed with the Russian probe. And no disrespect to Congressman Schiff, but it's like, oh, well, look, it's like <laughs> no, 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 but really, go after this guy I mean, with his yeah. eyes, the way he looks at you all the time. Yeah. Ooh. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, this guy, he's always saying that there's something there Democrats we haven't found. Democrats of it. the damned. Yeah. <laughs> no, look at his eyes. No, you want single pay you know health care. No, so look at his eyes. You know what? You want to talk about a mental health? The Democrats are suffering from, they're unhinged. You go they're at it, girl. Look at you. They're suffering from depression. You. They still, can't believe. You with the, with the yeah. shoulder thing, you're still really. Yeah, see, tell your my arms, doctor, arms, my, my this rotator girl, I have to tell you, judge yeah, is, and, 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 is yeah, it okay? Stop being nice. Can, yeah. No, you are shred and you are jacked up. I'm telling I you, your arms are like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, wait, okay. Wait, wait, can I say that in this day and age? Yeah, you can say it. I don't care. I don't care. I guess maybe I'm old school or something. But anyway, Meryl Streep, Joy, Behar, the rest of them, they're Everybody out of their mind. Everybody relax, please. It's going to be okay. And they think that the president's out of his mind. Joe Piscopo, thanks for being such a nice it's guy. It's all I love you, Joe. I love Good you, to too. See you. We'll be right back. Finally tonight, don't forget to check out my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, especially if you want to watch the best of Street Justice for 2017. They put it all together. And remember, you never have to miss justice. If you can't watch, just set your DVR. Thanks for watching. See you next Saturday night, same time, same place. I'm Janine Pirro, advocating for truth, justice, and the American way. The Greg Gutfeld Show is next.